All right, so um, we finished compactness, and then we're gonna spend two lectures on compactness. And for this lecture, we're gonna focus on compact spaces and the relation with continuous functions and also the compact spaces on the real line. So first is the definition. I, I assume that all of you guys haven't heard this before, like the open covering, right? And it's compact if every open covering have a finite subcover. <laughs> All right, so here's a lemma. So the subspace is compact if only if every covering by open sets in X has a finite subcollection, right? So basically said, oh, if you have an open cover of Y where each one is open in X, right? We have that Y is compact, right? So we have each of them are open in Y and they covers Y too. And we have a finite of them. And also, again, finite of them. These covers Y, so also these also covers Y. Yes, okay. And for this direction, suppose that mm, Okay, so suppose we have an open subcover of Y, where each open Y. And for each alpha, right, we have a prime alpha is equal to a alpha intersect with y, and this is open at x. And we know that this covers y, right, because um, this is a subset of a alpha, right, and so, yeah, they cover y, and by our condition, we know that, oh, we have finite of them, so, so also the finite of them. Yeah, this law is proved. And next is say that a oh, closed subspace of a compact space is compact. So if y is closed and x is compact, and suppose we have a open cover of y where each is open in x, right? So we let b equal to this, right? So so this collection adjoined with this. And this is open cover of x, right? It covers x because this covers y. And you take this, then and make sure that this covers x. Well, then pick five of them, this cover x. Right? <laughs> because x is compact, so we can take five of them, they cover x. But we don't need to care about this element if we're considering the co uh, cover of y, right? So we have a subcollection covers y. So y is compact, right? Because you have open cover of y, we're open in x, then you have a finite subcover where they covers y. Then y is compact by the lemma we just proved, right? And this one is showing that oh, compact subspace of a Hausdorff space is closed. So if you're compact subspace of a Hausdorff space, then you're closed. So if your compact is closed, we want to show that this is open, okay? So we pick x naught b and x minus y. So first, we want to show that there exists a neighborhood of x naught such that it's contained entirely in x minus y. So the thing is that, okay, for each element in y, we use the Hausdorff condition, okay? We use the Hausdorff condition and each of the vy, they're open cover of y. So each of them is an open cover of y. So we have only finally of them covers y, right? Now, if we define v to be all the, the union of them, and this contains y, right? And we also know that v with the intersection of all all these neighborhoods, so these are the neighborhood, the, the intersection of them, y intersects defined to be u, so we have y intersect u is empty. Well, here's my argument, right? So if a is, if a is n them, then use the distributive law, right? The distributive law is basically, um, right? This one intersect with u. Say, with u, right? Change to u, right? So, 
then A should be in this, should be in this, and, or this, or this. But each of them is empty, right? Because this intersect with U, um, Y1 is empty, right? Um, so it intersect with all of them is empty. So A is in the empty set. We get a contradiction. So, so no A is in this. So this should be empty. This should be empty, right? And what we get is that, okay. So what we have done so far is that, oh, U, this U is a neighborhood of X naught, right? Because, because each of UI is a neighborhood of X naught. And they're in the finite intersection is again open set and is a neighborhood of x naught. And it is does it disjoint with V, so it disjoint with Y because V covers Y, right? So what we've had now we have finished step one, which means that for any X with a neighborhood that contain X uh disjoint with Y. Well, we repeat this process for all X naught and X minus Y, then <laughs> We have all these neighborhood covers x minus y, where all of them is a union of open sets. So this is again open, which means that this is open, right? Next. Okay, next we have a. Uh, this is a lemma. We we just we just prove it, right? We in our proof we prove this lemma, right? We use this lemma. So, okay, so now is a crucial theorem. Image of a compact space on the continuous map is compact. So, basically saying this is compact, right? We have an open cover, and for each of them, we have the inverse image, then this is again an open cover of x, right? So we have a finite subcover, and for each x, right, by definition, right, open cover, we, we are in nine of them. So f of x should be them which means that they covers fx. So fx is compact, right? Because we have this open cover, then we have a, a finite subcover. Okay, let's go on. So if f is bijective continuous, and x is compact and y is Hausdorff, then this implies that f is a homeomorphism. Well, it's sufficient to show that oh, if a is closed in x, then f a is closed in y, right? So this means that f, the inverse of f is continuous. Well, because A is compact, right? A is compact, right? Because A is a closed subset of a compact set, right? So A is compact, which means that F of A is compact. While because Y is Hausdorff, right? Y is Hausdorff means that um, compact subset of a Hausdorff space is closed. This is a compact subspace of a Hausdorff space, so this is closed. So, if A is closed in X, F is closed, right? So we're done. Okay, now we have a, we're going very fast. So the product of finitely many compact space is compact. We just proved the product of two spaces and the rest of it is followed by induction, okay? So the step one we're going to show this is this statement. So for spaces X and Y, and suppose Y is compact, right? So suppose we have a point in X and we have an N open in this product topology such that it contains the slice. Okay. And we want to show that there exists a neighborhood of X not in X such that N contains W times Y. So here's a diagram. So we have X here. This is X times Y, right? And then we have our N contains this. Then we show that we find a W, right, a neighborhood of X, W neighborhood of X such that W times Y, which is the whole thing, is contained in this N. So as you can see right here. So we're going to prove this first. So first let, because N is open in this, then which means that for each point in this set, we have a basis element contains this point such that it lies in N, right? This is like the definition of a topology generated by a basis. You remember? It's a long time ago, right? Topology generated basis, which means that, oh, for any point in this, we have a basis element, contains the point, and also lies in this N. 
provided that n is open. Okay. Well, what this means that oh, there's an open cover of this, and each lies in n, right? Because for each point we have a basis. So again, so we we just run through every single point, and we have an open cover, and each of them lies in n, but this is homeomorphic to y, right? We've seen the similar argument from last lecture, right? And compactness is a topological property, right? Because we're only discussing about the open sets, right? So it's a topological property. <laughs> so, which means that we have a finite subcover covers this set. Well, we just let define W be the intersection of all of them, all these UAs, be a neighborhood of X and R, right? Then we pick X times Y at this point. So first we pick x times y in this point, and then we consider x not times y. So this y is the same, okay? So we have a point in this set, we consider this, while this should be an ui times vi for some i, right? Which means that y is in some vi, right? <laughs> y is m some vi but x is in w right x is in w x is in w which means that x times y is in ui times vi right well what we say is that oh for x y in this set is also in this set right so basically this it's a subset of this for some i, right? For some i. So each of the points are in the union of all of them. Well, the union of all of them is li lies in n, right? Because this is our assumption. So we have proof step one, right? You can review this. We just prove step one, right? So neighborhood, so name name neighborhood of x not such that this is contained in n. Okay, so now we prove the theorem. So we let x y be compact, and we let this be open cover of x times y. What we want is a finite subcover, right? So a would be uh, defined to be open cover of x times y. Then we're given a point x not in x. We know that since this space is compact, which means that finally of them covers x naught times y. Because this is a compact subspace of x times y, right? So we can find a finite subcover open and x times y covers this. Right? Well, this, uh, we just let n define to be the union. And again, this is open to x times y, right? And containing x naught times y. All right, so keep going. By step one, we have, this is in some w times y, right? Then again, again, right? This is open cover of w times y because is contained in n, right? And we define n to be their union. And for each x in the big X, we pick a wx neighborhood. Where we pick such wx neighborhood, like as in step one, fashion. And then this, we obtain a, a open cover of x, right? And since x is compact, right? And this covers x, then this is a cover of x times y. While each of them, right, each of them, right, can be covered by this, right, each x naught times y, right, because each x naught times y, um, each, each x naught times y can have some finite cover, right. So for each x naught, we have a finite cover, and for all of them, 
where you have a finite cover is covered by finite member of A, then in total, it's again finite, right? We finite sub, a finite cover of x times y, where each of them is in A. So we prove that the product of compact set is product. And the induction step is easy to check. I'll just, I'll just skip it. OK, so here is the tube lemma, right? To consider the space. This is our step one. Step one is basically the tube lemma. And yet we have a, uh, another formulation of compact spaces. So here's a definition. So collection C having a finite intersection property, which means that for any finite subcollection of C, the intersection is non empty. Right? So this, we have a theorem. So it's compact if and only if every collection of closed sets have a finite subcollection property. Every collection of closed sets to have a finite intersection property. And the intersection of all the elements is non empty. Right? So basically, we just work with contrapositive. Okay? So we let collection A to be the subset of X, and then we let C to be collection of all the complements of A, where each A is in the A. Okay? So we have three observations. This is open if only if each of them is closed. Yes, this is trivial. And if this covers x, then the intersection of them is empty. Well, this is by the De Morgan's law. And also the finite subcover. Okay? So we're gonna prove by contrapositive. X is compact, this is by definition, right? If and only if this is true. Well, this is true if only if it's contrapositive is true. The contrapositive means that, oh, here we have exist finite, which means if um, if A is open cover, then it exists something like this. And the contrapositive is that if no finite subcover, right, then it's not an open cover, it does not cover X, right? Well, we apply one, two, three, we apply all of them, which means that for any open, which means for any collection is closed, no finite sub cover, uh, no finite sub collection covers X, right? No finite covers X, right? If it covers X, then this finite intersection is closed, which means if we have no finite cover, which means that every collection is not empty, right? So if every finite subcollection has non-empty intersection, right, then A does not cover X. If A does not cover X, A does not cover X, then this is not empty, right? So this is not empty. And we're done. Right? So here's a special case. It's like a nested sequence, right? If each, each of them is nested with closed sets in a compact space, and if each of the sets is non-empty, then the collection automatically has the finite property and this is non-empty. Right. Okay, so now we're back to real numbers. So here, our goal is to prove that the closed interval is compact, okay? So first, we're gonna prove it, but we're only gonna use um, not we're just going to use like the least upper bound property of, of real numbers and as an order set, right, an order topology. We're, we're only using this leap up, uh, least upper bound property. Okay. So this one's pretty, a bit long, but we can do it, right? So we first have points, a closed interval, and we let A be open cover of AB in a subspace topology. Well, in the sub subspace topology is basically the same as the order topology on the closed interval a b okay so step one we, we claim that for each x in this the x is y such that this covered by at most two elements and here's the proof so if x has an immediate successor then the cardinality of this set is just two which is only x and y right so it can cover at most two. Well, otherwise, 
we pick A contains X and X is not equal to B and A is open right if A is open so is it like some some interval like contains X right you have a basis element that contains X and contains A and you take this this is belong to subset of A right and see it in this now we just pick y between them pick y between them and this is again a subset of a so it's covered by single element a single element right it is open so so we have some open interval contains x then this interval step two we prove that we consider the set c so c is any y between a and b such that it can be covered by finitely any finitely elements of a so we apply step one to x equal to a then c is not empty because we have a y greater than x greater than a such that this can be covered by fine uh, at most two elements, right? At most two elements, so this is basically finite, right? So we so C is not empty, and it's bounded above, right? It's bounded above by B. So we have a supremum, right? It's greater than A because we have an element that is greater than A, but in C, right? So it should be greater than A. And set three, we're going to show that this supremum is in the set. Okay, so first we pick A such that, so we pick A, an open, open element, an uh, open set from the open cover such that it contains C, right? So it's open, so which means that we have some D such that this contains NA, right? Well, so here's our diagram. Okay, so if C is not in C, then we have some Z such that is in C, right? Otherwise, D is the upper bound, right? So we, we need elements in between them. Otherwise, D is going to be upper bound. <laughs> so, yeah, exists D, Z such that. But A Z can be has finite cover, right? Because it's in C, it has a finite cover. And Z C is also an A, right? Because this is an A. So this is an A, right? Well then A Z union with Z C then Z again have a finite cover. Which means that C is in C, right? So we assume this and we get this is a contradiction. So it can only have C is in C. Okay, and step four, we're going to show that C is equal to B. Right. So if C is equal to B, then um, B, B is in C. Right. So AB, AB can be covered by finitely elements of A basically shows that the closing interval is compact so suppose we suppose again by contradiction where it was supposed for a contradiction such as c is less than b do we apply step one to x equal to c such that um we know that exists y greater than c such that this can cover by finite elements right but c is in c remember then we show that oh a C has a finite cover, and A Y again. Uh, C Y C Y. Yeah, I just yeah also also C Y right. Also C Y, but A C and C Y then A Y has a finite cover, but Y is greater than C and Y is N C. This is a contradiction, so C could only equal to B because we require that C can only be less than or equal to B. So if it's less than B we get a contradiction, so it can only be able to be, and we're done. So here's an immediate corollary, is that well, every closed interval is compact. 
Okay, now we characterize the compact subspaces in Rn. So subspace is compact if and only if closed and bounded into Euclidean metric or the square metric. This is like the hein borel theorem, right? Yeah. So we know that if A is bounded under the Euclidean metric, it's equivalent as saying bounded under the square metric because we have this. Right. No. Sorry. Yes. So it's okay. We we'll just consider the square metric. Okay. So for this direction, we have a compact in R n, but we know that R n is Hausdorff. Right. This is trivial to check. R n is Hausdorff because R is Hausdorff. And compact subspace of a Hausdorff space is closed, right? Now, we take this collection, which is all uh, balls centered at zero, and the radius is all the uh, natural numbers. This is open cover of Rn, right? Which means that it's open cover of A, and A is compact, so A should be in a single ball. Well, this means that a is bounded, right? Because for any x, y, and a, if the distance is less than some integer, then less than some positive number. So, of course, that means that A is bounded, right? So, if compact, we first have is closed, and then we have is bounded. So, this direction, we're done. And for this direction, suppose it is closed and bounded, right? So, first, we have it is bounded. Then, this is true, right? Now, we fix a point. And then we define b to be this from the distance square matrix from this to the origin. Well, this is less for any x and a, right? This by the triangle inequality, right? And we define this to equal to b, right? Now, this means that okay for any x and a. We have x i the, the each component right because for x and a the square metric from x is zero is less than or equal to p which means that each component right should be in this interval then this whole point should be in this uh interval while this is compact and finite product of compact set is again compact right so so this is compact so a is a closed subset of a compact set space or whatever then a is compact right. uh, here's a <coughs> so here's our uh, high borough theorem and we're gonna move on to extreme value theorem. We all learned this in our first year course, right? First year calculus. So compact, so which is a suitable generalization. All right, so we just show that A has a maximum and minimum. It's sufficient, we just show that the A, this has a maximum and minimum. And this contained in A. So we just first assume that if A has no maximum, then for this is open cover of A, right? Because A is compact, right? If I have this covers A. But if, if we take A to be, be the maximum of them, right? Then A is not even in the collection, right? Because they're open intervals, right? A is not even in the collection, but A is in A. So this does not cover A. We, we get a contradiction if A has no max. And again, similarly, if A has no min, we get the same thing, right? Then A must has max and A has min, right? And it's contained in A. Okay. And now we're going to prove the uniform continuous theorem. So before that, we're going to uh do something do some preparation okay so we're going to define a distance from a point to a set we define it to be like this to be the infinimum okay it's a metric space okay so we fix a and this is continuous so for each x the 
the output, right, the xa, right, from x to real, this is a continuous function. Well, why? Because, okay, so first, we have this, right, for, for any a, right, and this uses a triangle inequality, right, so if we move this to here, we get this, it's less than equal to this, right, because for any a is less than infima. While if we put this again, we put this here, we get this. And then we interchange x and y, we get this. So it is continuous. Why? Because for any x, for any epsilon, we let delta equal to epsilon. Then whenever y is delta close to x, we have this is less than or equal to this. It's less than or equal to delta. Right? It's just continuous. Okay? And we're going to use another lemma, which is called the, the Lebesgue number lemma. So we let this Lebesgue number lemma is going to be useful when we're proving the uniform continuous theorem, okay? So we let A be an open cover of the metric space, and if this space is compact, there exists a delta such that for any subset has diameter less than delta, then we have an element of open cover containing it. And this delta is called a Lebesgue number for the covering. So this is, for any covering, it's co it has a Lebesgue number for this covering. Okay? Provided that the space is compact. Okay, so let's just prove it. We'll just prove the existence. So if x is an open covering, then any delta is the Lebesgue number. So we just, we just skip it. We just assume that x is not in the open cover. Then... We just choose finally of them because x is compact, right? And we choose ci to be equal to this. And then we define x, and we define the function f by this formula. So let's take a close look at what is it doing. So first, we take sum of all x with the ci's. So the ci's are given by this, okay? You take the sum of all of them, and then you take their average. So we know that this is continuous, right? Because each of them is continuous. So the sum is continuous. And you just multiply by a, like a constant function, it is again continuous, right? Because constant function is continuous. So just addition and multiplication, and this is continuous. Okay. So given point x, we know we let's pick an i such that where x belongs to, and we have a ball, right, we, have a, we can have a, we can generate a ball because we're considering the metric space, mm -hmm. and what this means that is that the distance between x and ci is greater equal to epsilon, right, because because this radius is contained in AI. So if you want to reach CI, you must go at least epsilon far away from X, right? So this is justified. Or you can just use algebra, like it's very simple. And and FX is basically greater equal to this divided by N, right? So what we have shown is that this is a non-negative continuous function. And because x is compact, and this is order topology, right? By extreme value theorem, right? It has a minimum, and call this minimum delta. And we're gonna see that this delta is just a Lebesgue number what we are looking for. So, we just pick a set such that the diameter is less than delta. And then we have a pick a point, right? It requires yes and then b is contained in the delta um, neighborhood of x right because the diameter is less than delta right and now what we have is that delta is less than equal to f of x naught right because delta is delta is the minimum right and f of x naught is again less than equal to this or this is like the maximum of all of them, mm -hmm. right? This is a simple, and well, what we have, we have this, right? 
what we can say is that okay if y is in this delta ball around x naught then the distance between y and x is less than delta right but delta is less than or equal to this right so the distance between y and x naught is less than or equal to the distance between x naught and cm so y cannot be in cm can you see why right it's less than the infimum right so it cannot be in cm so why is it an am so it's an a so for any y in this y is in some a which means that this a b b is in this right we have b is in this so also this is a subset of am right it's a little big lumber right we're done okay so we all know what's the uniform continuous right I assume you know that you should have took my analysis course if you if not you just can read it right here okay so the theorem is that okay if x is compact continuous on the compact sets implies that it is uniformly continuous okay so um to prove this we're we're given epsilon right so for any epsilon greater than zero we just be this be open cover of y then we let alpha be the set of all inverse image of this and this is open cover of x because it's compact so if it's compact i have a this open cover right we just pick a delta to be the Lebesgue number right so which means that whenever x1 and x2 are delta close to each other under the metric in x we have the diameter of this set right it's less than delta right which means that this is in some uh in some of the elements right by our Lebesgue number lemma well for with that being said which means that f of x1 and f of x2 are this close to each other right this close to y and this we just use a triangle inequality right so given f and zero of a delta such that whenever this is true this is true uniform continuous and the last thing we're going to end the section with the elegant proof of saying that the real numbers are uncountable well we're going to use only the order topology on R. There's no algebraic thing. There's no decimals, expansions. There's no nothing like... It's just simply the order topology. And then we're going to use this to prove that the real is uncountable. Okay? So before that, we need a definition of the isolated point. This isolated means that this open set, one point set is open. Okay? So... We let x to be a non-empty compact Hausdorff space and has no isolated points, then it's uncountable. Right? The corollary is say that the closed interval and the real numbers is uncountable. Right? Because closed interval, they're non-empty and they're a compact, right? And they're Hausdorff. Right? Because of course they're Hausdorff. It's really really easy to check. Hausdorff space. And because, well, uh, to check it is Hausdorff because R is Hausdorff, right? R is Hausdorff and R is Hausdorff and the closed intervals are compact. And so the closing of was also like if you pick any points, right? So pick something like this. So they're separated. Well, yeah, uh, we know that a subspace of a Hausdorff of space is Hausdorff of space. The proof is uh, trivial, so I just skip it here. Uh, I'm not gonna waste time. But if you can prove it, it's not really hard. It's actually not really hard, okay? 
so the, so the subspace of the Hausdorff space is sub, the Hausdorff. Uh, so, so step one. Um, step one, we're gonna prove this uh, statement. What this statement says is that okay, so for any non-open, not non-empty open sets, and for any point x, we have a non-empty open set y such that is contained in U and X is not in the closure. Okay, so we're gonna need this uh, statement. So first, we pick Y and U such that it's not equal to X. This is possible, right? Because if X is in U, since this is not open, right? So the U cannot be equal to this set. So we can find another point Y. And if X is in U, because U is not empty, so we can pick Y and U. Okay, so, so no matter what, we can pick a y and u such as 9 equal to x. And then we use our Hausdorff condition. So again, this is open. Right? This intersects with the point u. Intersection of two open sets is open again. Well, then x is not in v bar, right? Because we have w1, a neighborhood of x such that the intersection with V is empty. So X is not in the closure, All right? And step two, we're gonna show that for any function from natural number to X is not surjective. So we can't find any surjective maps from real, uh, from, not from real, from the natural numbers to X. Then this follows that X is uncountable, right? Agree with me? Yes. So. We just pick x and b f, f n, and as in step one, right? We pick u such that. So we pick u be the non-empty open set, right? So x, and then we pick v one, right? That is contained in this u, such that x one is not in a closure of this v, right? And so by general, in general, so we have, given v n minus one open and x n and x we pick v n such that v n is contained in v n minus one and x n is not in a closure right this is by step one again step one again okay so we we have a nested right uh, we have a we have a yeah we have a nested um uh, nested sequence of uh, closed sets, right? Because x is uh, x is compact, right? Each of them is not empty, right? So have to like the finite, finite. Uh, the yeah, they're just not empty, and <laughs> there exists a point in all the intersection, right? We just prove this, right? It's a special case, right? Well. That means that we have an x that is in all of them, but this x cannot be equal to any of the xi's, right? Because each of the xi is, is not in this, but x is in this, so it cannot be equal to any of the xi's. So f can never be surjective, right? So, which means that every closed interval in R is uncountable, which means that R is uncountable because if your subset is uncountable, how can, right? You you'll never be uh countable, right? Every closed interval in R is uncountable. <laughs> of course, it has no isolated points because, uh, open sets are. Single point sets are not open, so it has no isolated points, right? So yeah, and. I'll end the compact space section part one here. I'll end it here. All right. See ya.